right now? Or is it is recording. Oh, we've been recording the whole time! <laughs> uh, welcome to the first episode of Movie Club Review. I'm your host, Dylan Camacho, and today on the first ever recorded episode, we have the whole gang here, everybody. On my left, we have Mason Rector. Uh, we also have Nathan Long. Long John Silvers. Long a lot of things. Uh -oh. And uh, we have Price Bell. Last but certainly not least. <laughs> Always last. I, I normally. A, I want a nickname. Normally least. Uh, last, normally least in our hearts, Price Bell, everybody. I'm all right with that. All right. And today we're talking about The Birdcage, Robin Williams, Nathan Lane's fantastic and appropriate beginning of this Pride Month's movie. Um, who wants to go ahead and take over first for just thoughts, opinions, and everything all of that wrapped up together? Price, I think you should go first. I thought I said, y'all said I was least. Uh, in our hearts, but not in this review order. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Uh, I watched this with my mom and little brother, so that made oh, no. it a bit strange. Huh. Oh, that's, that's a bit, different. A bit strange. I think uh, this is a family film, so though. What was the promising for that? Were y'all just... We were just together, together and just said, well, we'll watch a movie, weird. and we yeah. just watched it, and it was... I don't know. We all laughed. It was fine. Yeah. And even though they're very traditional, like... Christian family and everything, they were fine. Like, mm -hmm. even my mom was fine with it, oddly enough. I think yeah, she felt represented yeah. a little bit, even. <laughs> I don't think that at all. <laughs> See, that's what I think about this movie, too. Is like, this was before a time where every movie had to have a very, very stern, like, undertone. Mm -hmm. Back in the 90s, you didn't have all of that. Like, nowadays, like, we were talking about us yesterday. Like, yep. You know, it doesn't have to be like, oh, this ethnicity versus this, this, um, you know, gender versus this, this, sexuality versus this. Like, every movie has to have something nowadays. Mm -hmm. Back in the 90s, I didn't worry about that. They were wanting a good storyline with a lot of humor, with a good cast. And that's what I think this movie brings. So it kind of checks out that it doesn't offend anyone. They didn't harshly touch on the fact that, you know, the gay it's... community was... You know. So, right. I feel like this is one of those movies, though, that people, if they look at it through a modern lens, could definitely find offensive. For sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, and what the 90s has always done is done kind of an exaggerated outlook on life. Yeah. I mean, everybody I were... Extremely <laughs> yeah. exaggerated. This, this uh, one had some real characters to it. Right. Yeah. Which I was fine with, but... Like Nathan like, Lane. as I was yeah. thinking about <laughs> All of Nathan Lane. Yeah. <laughs> Like, as I was watching and thinking about it, I was like, this would offend people now. And it's kind of sad that it's like that, because, I mean, mm -hmm. the the point of it was, like, of the time that it was a bit of, like, challenging to traditions and kind of just showing the flaws in those people with those kind of closed-minded yeah. outlooks. Right. Uh, and I... And I think that's right. If you're looking at an intent of a movie, if it's sitting here trying to give you an experience, a direction to sit here and say, sure, is this an exaggerated version of it? Yeah, and is this a 90s feel for it? But the message there is to sit here and look into this culture, look into this minority piece, and really to kind of get a feel for it. And I think at, at the core of its movie, and we sit here and I'll, I'll kind of carry into everybody with this, we'll talk about our probably un uniformly our least favorite character is the son in this film. Do we probably agree uh, on oh this? My we gosh. definitely agree. Yeah. He's an actual yeah. asshole. Yeah. The, yeah. the son is actually terrible in this film, but he drives the plot to sit here and have you be... I think he's the people, the person we're supposed to be kind of in the shoes of, and that's why we're sitting here and we have a family who we're trying to impress with these all these people who are very conservative, but we also come from two dads raising you essentially your whole life, and... I think that there's a really good genuine heart to this movie where he sits there and even though he's he's terrible, whatever, screw him, <laughs> but whenever he brings up even the topic of saying, hey, I need dad, I need you to turn it down, I need you to essentially not be yourself, I need you to not be gay, and Robin Williams' character, whenever it's presented to him, he's just like, like, he wants to sit there and be a loving, supportive dad, but I love that he's even just like, just don't talk to me for a little while, like, and he just, like, you know, I need that space. But he yeah. initially says no. Yeah, he says, initially says well, no. Well, he jokingly and just, uh, is right. like, oh, yeah, you called my bluff, but yeah, like, he, he, he feels the sting from it. Yeah. And he doesn't, you know, he doesn't like it, obviously, but I think that's, like, where the love comes in. He's just like, yeah, you know what, I guess we can bite this bullet for you. We'll all get, it was really, really shitty, though, for, you know him to call him his uncle or something you know what i mean like hey right. my other father that i've always grown up with can't yeah. be my other father let's let's just pin him as an uncle and or send him to tahiti or wherever <laughs> right they were just gonna send him away yeah. like they're like, like I, Ugh. I think i don't know i 
Can we go ahead and start with qualms? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can we can just kind of cover whatever. all the feelings into it right now if you got qualms with it. So sure. the, the main qualm that I had was, you know, the sun mainly. But then also, like, just to keep driving the point on the other side of things, the, the woman's uh, dad was in, like, I the... I loved him. I thought he was great, especially it's even like it's way more applicable to now with how polarizing oh, politics for sure. is. Politics like he, hit hard back then, just like they do well, now. Well, back then it was almost like he was like a caricature. Like this yeah. couldn't, nobody could possibly. Yeah, nowadays like, we're like this the is what it You kind of feel like he can't genuinely be this person. Like yeah. he's he's put himself he in, he, like he's <laughs> cast himself in this mold and feels like he's inescapably there because that's where he's set his. Like, that's where he's casted his lot in yeah. politically, so he right. can't get away from it. But, yeah, at the same time, like, like we have on the on the son side of things, like, okay, yeah, it's kind of crappy that, you know, he's making his dad's, you know, play all of this, like you said, a mold instead of their true selves. But on the other side, it took another politician, like, sleeping with some, like, black under a child yeah. do whatever <laughs> the, only to make which was that, hilarious. that girl's dad see this as like okay you know what a wedding is what we need like that is right. another thing on top of this whole like it wouldn't have been accepted in this storyline hadn't every single thing Falling had to place, change definitely. every character which I didn't like completely like, I think they could have gotten away with it just being like, you know what, these guys are, you know, they're really rich, they're really conservative, let's try to just flip and change their mind. Like, let's not add the prostitute, let's not add all the, the photographers, all the journalists, all of the, you know, the bad rep and all that. I think they could have done it without all yeah. that. Sure. To I me, mean, it just a lot of blackens that is like the film a little 90s bit. like classic trope stuff. Maybe. Right. The whole yeah. idea of hiding in your house from the press and like sneaking out mm -hmm. the window this and was then, after then catching OJ you while you're sneaking yeah. out the window. This was right after OJ. Like, that is all... This is, that, that's in many movies. This is yeah, after actually. Home Alone. Hiding in your house was so in in the nineties, guys. So, <laughs> like, it, it did. It, it, it had to hit all the tro tropes. And I think that if like if this is a movie that gets remade now, even if they made a beat like beat for beat, uh, I would uh, you'd probably just cut this part out because it's just like it's not this really necessary trope. We're not really politically talking about anything at the moment, and it yeah. does feel like the extra twenty, maybe even more minutes of this movie that is the part that bloats like yeah. I always I think we always come to the point that I'm like if I had to redo this movie now what what do I cut and this is one of the movies where I wouldn't really cut anything because I think the political message is still there yeah. even if people do still get offended I'd just be like okay well if you're offended that's probably part of the point you're supposed to be offended if you feel a certain way about that not the people not like I don't want to offend the homosexual or the you know the gay community or anything like that but the people who are feeling like Oh, I'm the conservative, and like I would, I would never be so stupid to not like see that this woman is a guy. And we're like, you're missing the point, and yeah, that's exactly the point. That's like, the, yeah. right, that's the message you need to be getting across to. It's just like open your mind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say that that part really is kind of unnecessary. Although it it does humor me though, like the how it just kept getting worse. They kept hearing like comments that he made the night of, and it was just what was it like? Your money is on the table, darky, or something like that. It was like something that that character said in the movie, and they're yeah. just reporting. They're like, "God, it just keeps getting worse." Yeah. Like, <laughs> you just grit your teeth a little bit more with oh, right. Um, yeah. The, so the yeah, news reports were coming out saying yeah. that he was saying things like that, and I was just yeah. like, "Oh my god, <laughs> like that's so bad." Yeah. Um, Nowadays it wouldn't fly. Yeah. No. Well, have flown yeah, back then. Talking about a, the movie being remade, this movie would never be remade. No, and oh, it could. I'm glad that yeah. it's not either. Um, not only is it just because of I the agree. cultural piece, but also because it's. Also, Robin Williams flick, which is mostly untouchable unless you're Disney. I was gonna uh, say, unless you're making Aladdin. Yeah, unless yeah. you're remaking Aladdin, which was stellar, but we will Date talk about check. that on a oh. different movie. Oh, cast. so you, you felt good about that? I feel good about it. Hey, we're not gonna get into the Aladdin yeah, podcast yeah, yeah, here yeah. today. Well, like we don't it. got the time or yeah, day for yeah. it. But um, yeah, this, I, you know, I will say that my first impressions of this movie, kind of just catching bits and pieces of it, because before I ever watched it, it was one of the ones where my wife's a big fan of this one. Shout out to Hannah Camacho, fan mm. of the show, uh, occasionally guests on here. Yeah. Uh, we, <laughs> one time. Yeah, if she yeah. wasn't passed out from a hangover right now, I hope this doesn't get too many views down yeah. the road. Uh, <laughs> you I know would, what you did. Yeah, I would phone her in on this review, because well, I think oh, she wanted in on it. Price. Yeah, we have half a price, so it's fine. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> but she would watch this movie a lot, and I would kind of just catch bitch and bits and pieces here and I would just be like this looks looks like a like an okay movie but I do love Robin Williams so I finally said you know I need to sit down for it it's a pride month thing so let's go ahead and just cover this movie I'm so glad I did I enjoyed this movie really from start to finish you picked it so I hope you did I know well I before I'd ever sat down and watched all the way through I picked it on this one this was my first blind pick that I'd been like I hadn't really seen this movie from start to finish but I've seen it's enough a much of it. better blind pick than my blind <laughs> yeah. uh, 
for those not seeing the 16 previous videos that we have never recorded, and we will not go back and record. We'll list the titles and the reviews, but you'll notice unanimously Lawnmower Man was a pick of Nathan's long ago. And it's still fresh on our minds. We have yeah. since about twelve weeks later. Since banned blind picks from Nathan's it's, picks henceforth. It's like a it, it's a good touchstone, like a good place to like get the pulse of like what's bad. If, it, and it was. If you yeah. want to universally see what falls below a five on mine and Mason's scoreboard, yeah. it's Lawnmower Man. But we're not here talking about that. We're talking about this wonderful thing. How did we feel like the uh, for Robin Williams and Nathan Lane character? I want to focus on them for a second. Did you guys feel like they sold their roles? I absolutely yeah. loved Nathan Lane after about 40 minutes into the film. Couldn't stand his character. Yeah, in the beginning, I oh, was not keen on him. It was him. one of the more obnoxious characters I think yeah. I've ever seen. But he doesn't really change much throughout the movie. He, he does, though, to some degree. Either either you get used to it, or he changes in some way that is, yeah, but I you think, get used to it him changing. I agree. I think it's more you warming up to the idea of getting it because at first it's he's it's a lot jarring. to digest at first, right? Oh, for sure, yeah. That, this, be that beginning scene where he won't go out on stage, and yeah. So, maybe, maybe it's walking into a kindergarten class, being overwhelmed, and then after thirty minutes, you're just like, all right, you know what? It's just a bunch of kids. They're here to have fun. That's what Nathan Lane was to right. me. Like, <laughs> holy hell, I gotta get out of here. It's a good comparison. But then it was all right, and the, that's apt. The funny thing is, is I think that he's even for a '90s exaggeration. I've like if you've gone to play, or you, or if you're, you know, have friends in the like gay community. I guess not even necessarily have to be gay, but if you have friends in the drag community and you've met people like that, I've met people like that, work people like that. So it was a little less jarring because like where it's supposed, to, everybody's supposed to be a little bit exaggerated. I'm like, no, this seems pretty, pretty close, on point. Yeah. I'm like, I've met people very much to this tone, so it wasn't like too jarring when I saw it on film. But as you spend more time with that, like with Nathan Lane's character, and you just see how funny he is, and like kind of like you kind of get on board with it after yeah. the fact. So I think if you are jarred by it for the first part of it. And I can see that, that you're like, okay, but look how funny they are interacting here. And then Nathan Lane really carries, like, a lot of this movie. And that says a lot in a movie with Robin Williams in the 90s. Yeah. So well, Robin Williams wasn't really doing it a lot of Robin yeah. Williams type of things. He was more actually dramatic acting than anything. Which I did like. Like, he was more set in the drama stuff because he needed to be that grounded character in comparison to somebody having somebody as flamboyant as Nathan Lane's character yeah. there. You needed that parallel. And, you know, I thought Robin Williams, and just because I'm, I'm going to show Robin Williams till the day I die because I love him, but I think he does a wonderful balance of doing the dramatic roles while still sitting there and having funny moments. There's the moment where he's sitting there in the kitchen yelling at their lovely, uh, their waiter. Dominican uh, Republic yeah. guy, yeah. whatever, Guatemalan. And, yeah. And he, something. Right, the servant, essentially. So he goes in there and he's just screaming at him for the meal being bad. And he's like, I don't care about the fucking shrimp. Like, yeah. and he's just <laughs> losing it on him the entire time, just yelling at him. And it's just a huge mess in there. And I do love how the, this is one of those movies where it's like, oh, it couldn't get any worse than this. But. And, and then it yeah. just does. It's like, oh, the bowls. Oh, what, what are these? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the bowls was good. Yeah. yeah. The bowl scene was good. There was. There was I, I should have paused it and actually taken a look at what was going on with the bowls. I know. I, I kind of wish I, I did, too. too. There was one time, like, that actually, just, like, the subtle little things were making me laugh more so than the storyline itself. But, like, like for instance, when the sun was first coming in and just, like, taking everything off the walls, they had the moving crew moving everything out. <laughs> like, Robin Williams came in, like, in the middle of all of it, and he was like, what are you doing? Like... You know this this statue isn't that bad. It was obviously a very flamboyant statue, and Robin Williams was like, "Just look!" And then he flips it around, and then it just looks like a straight up penis. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like penis hanging out. What about but that? Did, uh -huh. you, did yeah. you catch later whenever he was like in one of those cabinets, <laughs> and he was like holding it by the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just subtle like little yeah. things that were just like, all right, okay, these float, these float well if you're paying attention, but yeah, I I kind of thought this movie followed like the same basis of like. You know, planes, trains, and automobiles, or like Tommy Boy, like they mm. had the exact same flow of comedy, but like obviously the storylines were way different. All right. It made me feel like I was watching one of those movies, which are good. Yeah, because the '90s ones that had a lot of like planes, trains, automobiles had a very lot of had a lot of subtle comedy to it. Like, yes. You had your explosive, like in your face, exaggerated comedy, but there was a, like the things you upon rewatching that you'll always notice and laugh about more is the little tiny things they add in throughout it yeah. and I think that they did a really good job of being subtle with their pieces especially again for a Robin Williams films and Robin Williams on that he was either playing highly exaggerated comedy at times like he, I, he's like right next to Jim Carrey on that oh he's yeah. identical I think or he was having these really grounded like drama roles and uh, between that and uh, 
uh, the high school teacher one of them totally blanking dead right now. Dead Poets Society and stuff like that, right? So yeah. he, I, I think he does the he does he, a good middle ground in this film where he sits there and finds the comedy beats, but still sits there and has the drama when it needs it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. You guys have any final comments for it? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, we're at the part of the film podcast that we sit here and start to wrap up into scores, and I guess we'll just start from Price and work our way across then. I'm going first again. Uh, you know what? You're right. We hate that for Price. So we're going to go ahead and start Mason. We'll skip over me because I want to be last since it is my film for the week, and then we will just circle back to me. So Mason, score on The Birdcage. I think uh, at the end of the day, it is, it's an older film that... I did enjoy, um, it wasn't necessarily my storyline, uh, it wasn't up my alley as much as I would have liked. I'm going to give it a 6.5 hmm. because it wasn't bad, uh, I don't know, again I, would, I think I would prefer Tommy Boy, I could watch it again versus that or you know, like pretty much anything from that. <laughs> From from that type of criteria. Sure, if you're looking at that comedy style, you just think that those ones chive better with. Yeah, it. and that's the thing. And like, if you look at that storyline, yeah. like, it doesn't hold up much better. But it's more. It's like, I think it's more comedy yeah. than Birdcage. Some, some of them are more of a classic than others. Yeah, right. And right. this yeah. one, this one is not bad in any way. It's no. it's it's funny. It's entertaining, but it doesn't. You're not gonna go back and rewatch it. Like, it didn't yeah, grab you like that for me. Yeah, and, and the same for me. Yeah, like I actually would give it the exact same rating, six point five. Yeah, because um, I wouldn't really suggest it to anybody. Yeah. I did like watching it. Under uh, the radar. It was, it was it was a perfectly good movie. You know, it was it did a good job. Yeah. But it, I don't know. It's just not something I'm gonna come back to. And my my problem with like six fives is a lot of the times, like months from now, if you were to ask me about the plot and like some of those funny parts, like I'm gonna be honest with you, I'll I'll forget a lot of it. Yeah. It didn't grip me as much as you know some of the other movies that I would probably rate a little higher. But like, like you're right, it, it was good. It's exactly my feelings on Community, which you made me watch. Oh, easy. Exactly <laughs> the same. Easy. Like, I know well, I enjoyed it. It's like I enjoyed watching like I, that. Like, I enjoyed watching it, but, but it's, it's like, I'm not going to remember all the jokes. I'm not going to yeah, remember all that kind of stuff. It's a lot to take in. This isn't an hour and a half. Yeah. This yeah. is. Is it weird? This is how I feel about Lord of the Rings, but we're not going to get into <laughs> yeah, it. We're not, it's <laughs> like, crazy. We're not talking about yeah. Community and Lord of the Rings. All right, so on to the birdcage, Nathan, if you're wrapped on. 6.5. Price, so we got two 6.5s. Let's see. I'm usually not anywhere near Mason on any kind of scale since I'm on a normal person scale but <laughs> I was going to go with a 7 okay. uh, mainly because I really like the dry humor um, and even the out, like the crazy humor I liked all of that. The only reason I wouldn't rate it higher is because I felt like there was a big lull uh, from the point where the family uh, left their house and was traveling down to uh, Florida or whatever. Mm, yeah. There was like a big lull in the kind of jokes between then that really got me. But like the beginning of the movie is so good and then the ending of the movie is so good and kind of carries that middle yeah. part which I felt kind of weighted down for me which is why I do it a seven. Right. Because I, I was out loud laughing a lot during the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, I would agree that I think this movie does definitely have its chug moments, the the newscasting parts and stuff like that. It's yeah, I felt like that was unnecessary. It it well. drags, and I would yeah, the point where they're traveling also drags. The, the, it's almost a mini plot. Like I don't know yeah. why they gave it enough to merit a mini plot almost. If no. we put a if we like drew like a chart of all the plots that are in this movie, like you're like all right, this this feel a little extra, this little feels extra. Like the media part. Although it's necessary to kind of put the pressure on them, yeah. uh, like I, those are my least favorite parts. As soon as I started showing the media, like I could feel myself tuning out of the film, and I was just like, I, I really wish it was just focused into this one situation, and that was enough. Yeah. Um, which are my good, biggest columns on it, but again, to the strengths, I, I had a really fun time with it. I laughed at it. I liked it better than I thought I was going to whenever I initially had seen bits and pieces of it, and then seeing it in its start to finish product, uh, I had a really good time with this, which is why I will give it a 7.5. I rated pretty well on this one, um, but I think we all land. This is probably the closest we've had our scores. This, this really might is. actually be the closest score right. and I, ever. And I think it was mainly because like all of us felt good about it. it right. We yeah. felt good enough about it. We felt. I think we felt good, and we thought it was going to be better than yeah. when you first start watching this film, and then you see how it goes. Yeah. Like it, you feel I was worse. Worried. Yeah, I was yeah. real but worried it, at yeah. the beginning. It does. It, it puts you onto a ride on that later part of it, and then you just enjoy the ride from there. Yeah. But the first part is a bit of a chug, and I will say they're just pacing issues. But this is a pretty loved film from the people 
people who, who have watched it and people who would probably surprise you. Price's mom, fan of the show. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll get her on next week. <laughs> we'll get her on next week. Uh, I was uh, you know, pleasantly surprised by it. I know my wife's a big fan of it. Uh, a bunch of our friends are, like, they say they watch it, like, almost once a month. And, you know, granted, these are also my gay friends, so that makes sense. Yeah. But to be fair, it's their movie. They should have a movie yeah, yeah. that they can go to with that. Um, for the allies on us, I guess we are an ally podcast now. We're political views and stances. Price is a part of that, um, whether he wants to be or not. Uh, we're going to sit here and say, yeah, okay, so anywhere from 6.5 7.5, I think it's a pretty good range. Uh, We've never been in that complaint. No, I know. Yeah. This is, this is yeah, a the good first recording. The before that was Crimson Peak was where we thought yeah. we had finally kind of hit the pulse and like where yeah. we yeah. have commonalities in our middle Yep. Yeah. So, uh, this and Crimson Peak are the most polarizing films on it so far. I thought it was raw. Uh, no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not polar- not polarizing, not. sorry, but most in the middle of, like, yeah. the lane. That's yeah. the opposite of polarizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sorry, opposite sorry. of polarizing. Right. Uh, it's apparently yeah. our Wall most... was very polarizing. There was one good score in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, uh, we never have to rewatch those movies and review it to actually get it on camera, it'll be too soon. Uh, <laughs> so, I'll there are 17 that. reviews. This might be our, like, 18th <laughs> review or something, but this is the first official review on this video recording. Um, Mason, you're taking over for next week, right? I sure am. I think we should wrap this video by going ahead and seeing what we have planned for next week so the fans know what to be looking forward to for this coming week. <laughs> All right, so I like to change up the pace. I like the genre change up. Uh, we do have a tendency of going uh, in the same direction most weeks, it seems like. So this week I'm going to try to do a little bit of horror. Ooh. Have you guys ever seen Sinister? Seen no. It. I know Dylan has seen yep. it, so... Oh, two across the board? It's nope. it, it's it's going to be the pick, I believe. Yep. It's, yeah. So by movie club rules, if uh, half of the club has not seen it, or more than half if three of the members have not, but just for the two is fine, then uh, that movie goes in. So it looks like we're watching Sinister next week. Ethan right. Hawke's finest. Ethan Hawke's <laughs> finest little bit with uh, spooky found footage and spooky boys. Uh, all the good stuff in there. So it looks like we're looking into Sinister next week. And uh, guys, we're going to catch you at. You guys got any Twitter handles you want to plug? Instagram, Facebook? Nope. Stuff like that. I'm Dylan Camacho, your host. You can catch me at C A M A C H Octopus at Twitter. Uh, don't follow my Instagram, I don't do anything there. And you can catch me on uh, Facebook, I won't add you if I don't know you. Sorry, that's just the life. Until we make a full official page for this, maybe down the road, we'll see. Uh, then we can kind of look into that then. And uh, when we get that, we'll start plugging that. But if nobody else has anything to plug, we will see you next week for Sinister. Have a good one, guys. Farewell. See ya.